Um, today, I'm going to talk to you about uh, creationists and how they view the fossil record. And um, if we can put up the first slide, we're going to do that by looking at a very contentious topic in the whole evolution creation debate as it relates to paleontology, and that's feathered dinosaurs. Um, so next slide. Some of you guys may have seen this. This happened this year. This was published. This is a chunk of amber, and inside of it, there is a feathery tail right there. And you can see how small this is. There's some ants there. And uh, check out the preservation on this. It's just exquisite. It's amazing. These feathers are tiny, um, and you can see all kinds of detail in here. Now, what's interesting about this, this tail does not look like it came from a bird. It looks like a dinosaur tail, and it's covered in feathers. Now, how did this animal get its tail stuck in tree sap? I have no clue. Like, if it was, like, leaning against a tree and then, like, its tail ripped off, I think that's unlikely, because, you know, that seems very, very unlikely. It's probably that it died and its tail got caught in some tree sap afterwards. But anyway, next slide. So, this kind of thing is not new. Paleontologists have been talking about this stuff for a long time, and this is what evolutionists use to talk about one of their, what they call their best transitional sequences which is dinosaurs turning into birds. Now, as creationists, we have an issue with this. Because we look at it and we say, well, hold on. I mean, Genesis is pretty explicit. Day five, you have birds created. Day six, you have land animals created. That seems backwards from what we see here. So, creationists want to understand this. But to understand this, we've got to go back to history. And there's a lot of history tonight. It seems like a theme. But uh, let's go to the next slide. We'll talk about the fossil that started this whole thing, and it's Archaeopteryx. Archaeopteryx was first found in the 1860s in Germany. Now, this particular one comes from the later 1800s, this specimen. You can see it's got feathers on it, it's got wings, it's got feathers on its tail. Notice, however, the skeleton. It's got claws on its fingers, it's got teeth in its mouth, it's got a long, bony tail. Those are all dinosaur characteristics. So people saw this thing and they were like, this is weird. What do we do with this? And evolutionists jumped on it immediately and said, we found a transitional form. We know where birds come from, they come from dinosaurs. And creationists, of course, said, well, we don't think that. And for a long time, it was a stalemate, because this was basically the only animal out there that showed this kind of thing. We had tons of specimens of it, but that was it. Next slide. That all changed in the 1990s and 2000s, when people started pulling fossils out of Laoning, China, and they just started pouring out of there. And these fossils were preserved exquisitely. Sinosauropteryx over here has some fuzz going all the way along its back up its tail. And there was a lot of debate about what this fuzz is, but people have looked at this carefully using all kinds of chemical methods, and they said, this thing is some kind of a filamentous integument, some fun words for you there, that would basically be like the fluff on a little chick that you might hold in your hand. This guy's Microraptor. Notice the raptor part. This is a relative of Velociraptor. It's in the same family as Velociraptor. But it's covered in feathers. Check those things out. Off its wings, or I guess it makes up its wings. It also has wings on its feet, which I don't really understand what the point of that is. But it's also got feathers on its tail and on its neck. So it looks like you've got some feathered dinosaurs. So how do creationists deal with this? Let's go to the next slide. There's kind of been three classic moves on this. Creationists have cried foul, and I know that's a pun. I didn't mean it. I, it happened. Um, but they said, maybe they're all fakes. Okay, so here is a fake. This is Archaeoraptor. It turned out it was a fake fossil that some people had put together. But the people that figured out it was fake were the evolutionists, not the creationists. They caught it themselves. So, you know, it seems like the rest of them, they kind of real. Well, you could deny it, okay? So some people say, well, there's birds and there's dinosaurs. And every fossil that has feathers on it is a bird, and every fossil that doesn't have feathers is a dinosaur. And that'd be an easy dichotomy, but as we already saw, it's not that simple. And you're kind of misleading things to make it that simple. Now, I think some people, they're not being misleading on purpose. It's just they don't have a lot of training in this. And other people just ignore it. They just say, well, you know, there's Archaeopteryx. I don't know about these other things. I'll just pretend they're not there. Well, that's not good science, and that's not respectful to God at all, and certainly not showing his glory. Next slide. So how do we deal with this as creationists? Well, we deal with it like we do anything else. We have confidence in our worldview. We know it's correct. Our foundation is right, and we move out from there 
with great confidence to attack difficult questions. Right? We can't just deny evidence. We already talked about that today. Gravity's gonna work if you jump off that building, even if you don't believe in it, right? Well, these things are here, so you gotta explain them. How do we do that? We study, we work hard. And I can't give you a full solution right now, because that's how science works. If it could, I'd have some kind of prize or something. I don't know. But what I can tell you right now is, what's wrong with a feathered dinosaur? You know, we are so used to this idea of very separate reptiles, birds, and mammals, because that's how things are today. But you know what, if these animals were still alive, our classification scheme might look a lot different today. We're kind of trying to take the present and put it back on the past. And that's kind of funny because we always accuse the evolutionists of that, but we're actually kind of doing that too. And so what we want to do is say, well, hold on. Might there be another explanation here? And that's what we want to work on. And if we have confidence in our worldview move forward, we can understand very interesting things like this dinosaur right here, which is not on the way to birds, yet has all kinds of feathery stuff on it. Which might say, even if you're nothing like a bird, maybe you've got some kind of feathery filamentous stuff on you just like all mammals have fur. So, at first, what seems like a very, very difficult challenge is still a difficult challenge, but it's somewhere we can move forward without denying evidence, without shielding our eyes. We can have confidence in our worldview, and as a result, do really, really good science. Thank you.